Hi, we're back. <clears throat> I know it's been a while since we've done an actual video. I know on my on my recent videos have been reactions, y'all. But I got this special one for y'all. This is a highly requested sent in video from a bunch of sent in by a whole bunch of supporters. We're about to get straight into it, y'all. What's good, YouTube? To like reaction minute today, we're back with another reaction video, man. By the title, y'all can tell exactly what it is, man. We're back with some, man. We got some Swedish crime. This is my first time reacting to it, and we actually have one that's in English. So shout out to the person that runs this channel. He, I. Uh, he actually has a channel that he does it in Swedish and English. So shout out to him. And the video that people sent in to me was this one right here. Told off gang then shot dead in front of his son. I don't know what it, it sounds pretty gruesome y'all. Let's get straight into it. Man. Make sure y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on IG, Twitch, and Snap all at the bottom of the screen. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. A extremely tragic event took place yesterday in southern Stockholm, Sweden. Less than 24 hours ago on April 12th in a sick display of raw brutality, a father in the company of his 12-year-old son tried to tell off a group of young boys that were behaving badly. Things went wrong fast after that. At 6.15 p.m. on Wednesday evening, there was a report of a shooting in Skarholmen in southern Stockholm. The shooting occurred near a pedestrian tunnel close to the sports hall in the center of Skarholmen. One man was found shot outdoors. The extent of his injuries was first unclear, but he was later pronounced dead. According to reports, three to four individuals fled on electric bicycles, fat bikes, after the incident. <laughs> so we didn't be like that. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Oh, no, day, don't say anything. I, yes, I have a two liter. This is my own personal drink. What are you talking about? You said if it's your drink, why didn't you put your lips on it? I don't know, y'all. It just seems wrong on that big ass bottle. Keep it going, though. Several shootings and murders have occurred in Skarholmen in recent weeks and months, as well as in the nearby area of Varberg. A gang war has been going on between the Skarholmen neighborhood versus the Varberg neighborhood. We will talk about this conflict later in the video. Michael was only 39 years old. Michael was on his way to the local indoor swimming pool and was riding a bicycle together with his 12-year-old son. In the pedestrian tunnel just before the swimming pool, the father and his son rode past a group of youths. Something made Michael turn back after he asked his son to stay further away. Mm -hmm. A confrontation ensued, and one of the youths aimed a weapon at Michael. A shot was fired. According to some reports, it was when Michael tried to grab the weapon from the youth that he was shot in the head. Michael died on the spot, in front of his son. Just because he spoke up to some local youths for bad behavior. I don't know what was going on right now. When the Swedish police oh. classify something as code red, it means that a violent crime has occurred or is imminent. In this area south of the city, several parallel and overlapping conflicts have proven to be extremely violent and deadly, continuing into 2024. A rapper is now charged with aiding in the murder of a rival gang leader. The well-known Bredang gang has splintered, with the younger generations from the Satra neighborhood and Bredang neighborhood divided into different warring factions. Rapper Jojo from Bredang and his closest friends are on one side, and the so-called Satra youngsters on the other side. This new conflict is believed to have claimed at least three lives so far. Meanwhile, a conflict connected to the rapper 23 and his paid and full gang is taking place in neighboring Fidja. Mm -hmm. The Fidja neighborhood. Hold on, is wait, wait, wait. I gotta hear that one more time, y'all. My bad. 
Bredang and his closest friends are on one side, wait, and the wait, so-called Satri youngsters on the other side. Iberhood divided into different warring factions. Rapper Jojo from Bredang and his closest friends are on one side, Jojo, okay. and the so-called Satri youngsters on the other side. This new conflict is believed to have claimed at least three lives so far. Meanwhile, a conflict connected to the rapper 23 and his paid and full gang is taking place in neighboring Fidja. The Fidja neighborhood is allegedly the base of operations for the paid and full gang. March 21st, 2024. On Thursday evening around 9.16 p.m., 27-year-old Emery was shot dead while at eating in a restaurant in Fidja Centrum. Surveillance footage has captured the following events. A young man starts firing shots with an AK. Now you know what they call that? They call that a Chino burger, y'all. Let me stop talking. Four. On Thursday evening around 9.16 p.m., 27-year-old Emery was shot dead while at eating in a restaurant in Fidja Centrum. They would call that an Emery Surveillance burger, Surveillance footage has captured the following events. A young man starts firing shots with an AK-47. Now let's focus on the ongoing gang war between the Varberg and Skarholman neighborhoods. Historically, criminals from Varby Guard, known as the Varby Criminal Network, That's have sin, controlled right? the drug trade in Varby Guard as well in Skarholman and Varberg in southern Stockholm, even though local actors have been responsible for sales in each neighborhood. After much of the leadership of the Varby Network received long prison sentences, there is a split and divide within the organization and their allies. By the end of 2022, it becomes clear to the police that the Varberg faction has begun to ally with the Kurdish Fox and the Foxtrot Network. Meanwhile, the Skarholman faction remains loyal with the Varby Network, sparking a conflict between the two. The North Africans or the Brothers are a pair of brothers who are the main figures in one of the warring factions. The brothers Taha and Osama have historically controlled the drug trade in Skarholman for a long time under the Varby gang's management. Andreas has been involved in the drug trade in Varberg under Varby Gang's management for many years. The conflict between Skarholman and Varberg escalates during the summer of 2022. Mm -hmm. August 10, 2022. Police received an alarm at 9.56 p.m. on Wednesday evening about a brawl and shooting on Varberg's plan in Varberg. At the scene, police that's how it always, hey, old man. That's how it always starts, man. A fight, y'all, and then somebody get their ass beat. Can't take the L. You know what I mean? He said, fuck it. Fuck it, car cuz. Bring chop, bring everything. Okay. Just jokes, man. Keep it going, y'all. PM on Wednesday evening about a brawl and shooting on Varberg's plan in Varberg. At the scene, police found a 26-year-old man shot several times, including in the head according to reports. The victim died from his injuries at the scene of the crime. The 26-year-old victim is Osama from Skarholman. Taha's younger brother has been murdered. Uh-oh. The Skarholman side accuses the Varberg side of being behind the murder. 22-year-old Andreas from the Varberg faction was identified as a suspect in the murder. Andreas and other individuals from the Varberg gang are nowhere to be seen in Varberg after the murder according to police surveillance. They stayed on the north side of the city and Andreas was partly detained for serious weapon offenses and always wore a bulletproof vest during this time. <laughs> The threat against Andreas' life was confirmed by the police after it emerged that Osama's brother Taha wanted to avenge his brother's murder. A younger brother of Andreas is reportedly threatened. The threat consists of Andreas is going feel what it's like to lose a brother. Since Taha holds Andreas responsible for his brother's murder. After the murder, there are several smaller conflicts and fights between youths from the Skarholman and Varberg area. There is also a shooting at night near a school in Varberg during this time, which is still unsolved, but is believed to be related to the conflict, according to the police. December 1st, 2022. Police receive calls after 8 p.m. in the evening from residents in Varberg. Locals are worried after seeing two darkly dressed and masked young men standing and waiting near the front gate to Andreas' apartment building. When the police arrive at the address and see two masked men standing next to two black electric bicycles, the men flee when they see the police. The police manage to catch both boys after a short pursuit, 
one boy is arrested wearing dark clothing and a bulletproof vest. He also has a loaded pistol in his right jacket pocket. The day after the incident, the police find another pistol thrown in a bush along the escape route. The boys are only 15 and 17 years old. Both are considered to be errand boys for Taha and the Scarholman side. Much of the investigation suggests that it was Andreas' younger brother who was the target for the young boys. The boys are convicted of, among other things, serious weapon offenses but acquitted of attempted murder. Since both were under 18 years old, they only received youth care and closed youth care for eight months. March 31, 2023. At 7.24 p.m. on Friday evening, there is calls about gunfire at Brett Holmesgatten in Scarholman in southern Stockholm. Witnesses report that there were a total of four dark-dressed individuals at the scene, all of whom had pistols, two groups of two, and the men suddenly began shooting at each other. The two young men seen on CCTV walking back and forth in the area minutes before the shooting and appearing to look for somebody, these two young men apparently started shooting first at the two men coming out of the mosque according to our witnesses. When the police arrive at the crime scene, they find no injured persons, but at a home store gate, 22 empty shell casings are found. It turns out that only the two masked young men armed with pistols fired a total of 22 shots in a northerly direction towards Taha, the remaining leader of Scar- And ain't hit shit. These niggas bricked, airballed, not even bricked, y'all. At least you hit the rim, some shit, y'all. Fuck, them niggas airballed badly. At a home store get- 22? I ain't gonna lie, if I get 22, I'm at least hitting one. Come on, bro. 22 empty shell casings are found. It turns out that only the two masked young men armed with pistols fired a total of 22 shots in a northerly direction towards Taha, the remaining leader of Scarholman, and another man who was outside the mosque. Taha survives the murder attempt. 22 April shots. 5th, 2023. Oh, also, y'all. Yeah. Also, y'all, yeah, um, I'm give, I'm doing a video with this pen, y'all. Yeah. I don't want to show you everything, but just know it's a digital pen, and I'm going to be doing... Uh, blinkers until I green out. I'm, I'm gonna do a first vlog of the year, y'all. So be on the lookout for that one. It's coming soon. I promise. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a banger too. Wednesday evening, calls about gunfire near the subway station in Scarholman come in. On CCTV, two young men arrive at the scene by taxi. They ask the driver to wait for a few minutes. The masked men walk down the stairs closest to the northern subway entrance of Scarholman's, and they walk towards the kebab house. Just 25 minutes earlier, at 4.45 p.m., gang leader Taha, accompanied by two other men, was checked by the police inside the bingo hall. The two masked men walk towards the bingo hall and take out their pistols and aim them at two men somewhere outside the bingo hall. Several shots are fired and then there is silence for six seconds. The other victim, a friend of Taha's, runs up the stairs where the perpetrators came from and drops his mobile phone on the ground. He is chased by one of the perpetrators who then raises his weapon and fires two shots at the fleeing man. The second perpetrator comes shortly afterwards and also runs up the stairs and out of sight. The two perpetrators are later seen on surveillance footage returning to the taxi they came with and leaving the scene and one of them is dropped off in Varberg and the other one continues by taxi to a Volingby address near where one of the now prosecuted shooters is registered. The man who is a friend of Taha and also was shot at returns to the scene a few minutes after the shooting and finds his friend seriously injured. At least 21 shots were fired at the scene. The victim and target Taha, the leader of the Scarholman gang, was shot at from two different weapons when he was somewhere in the vicinity in front of the bingo hall. Taha was hit by at least one bullet and began bleeding when he was in front of the bingo hall. Taha then moved southwards towards and up on a walkway between the ponds where he then collapsed. Before reaching the walkway where he collapsed, he was hit by several bullets, including in the cheek and throat. Hmm. Four bullets fired from the weapon hit Taha in the back and were lodged in his bulletproof vest. Taha was hit by a bullet in the cheek that exited through the throat one in the back of the right shoulder, left side of the abdomen, left forearm, and one bullet in each leg. A total of 10 bullets hit him and Taha died from his injuries. It turns out that 25 shots were fired at the scene. A man above 50 years old was also hit by at least one stray bullet in the chest, which was life-threatening. 
Jeez. But he survives. On April 14, 2023, two loaded Glock pistols used in the murder are found wrapped in towels under a stone in a wooded area in Varberg. The other prosecuted shooter that was dropped off by taxi after the murder lives nearby the secret stash of- That's why they hit shit. They had them G-Locks, boy. Ooh! Them bitches, them bitches really do got them. I ain't gonna lie. Them bitches is it. Wrapped in towels under a stone in a wooded area in Varberg. The other prosecuted sh shooter that was dropped off by taxi after the murder lives nearby the secret stash of weapons. Both weapons are linked to several other cases. From March 14th to the murder of Taha on April 5th, these weapons were used at least five different times in attempted murders. Jeez. Many of the suspects in Taha's murder have a clear connection to the Varberg faction. The threat against Taha was high and the police had informed him about it. Just hours after the death of Taha, fireworks are seen going off in Varberg, a common practice within the Swedish gang scene of people celebrating the death of an enemy. Several gang members in Varberg, including the rapper Bilko, are identified by police as taking part in setting off the fireworks. 50. The rapper Fiddy from the Foxtrot gang shares the story of the fireworks on his own Instagram, which is a clear sign of the Varberg gang having an Fox alliance Trot. with the Kurdish Fox at that point in time. The defendants from the Varberg faction for the murder of Taha are Nathaniel, now 18 years old, was 17 years old at the time of the murder, and he is charged with murder, attempted murder, endangering others, serious weapon offenses. Two years later. He is suspected to be one of the shooters on April 5th when Taha died, and for the attempted murder of Taha on March 31st, where he is believed to be one of the shooters. He was the one who ordered a taxi from his own phone to and from the crime scene. Nikolaos Goofy. was 17 years old, but has now turned 18. He is charged with murder, attempted murder, serious weapon offenses, serious drug offenses for possession of cocaine, cannabis, tramadol as well as violations of the weapons law. He is suspected to be one of the shooters in the murder of Taha and he was filmed at the weapon stash in Varberg where the murder weapons were found. The designated leader of the Varberg faction, Andreas, 22 years old, is charged with aiding in murder and aiding in attempted murder. Rapper Bilko, 21 years old, is charged with aiding and abetting murder and attempted murder. Daniel, Sick. 28 years old, is charged with aiding and abetting murder and attempted murder. Sengiz, 19 years old, is charged with aiding and abetting murder and attempted murder. Mohammed, 21 years old, is charged with aiding and abetting murder and attempted murder. These five men are all believed to have participated in the planning of the murder and or attempted murder. The police assess that the conflict continues after Taha's murder and a suspected revenge attempt on the Varberg Jeez. faction occurs. On May 27th, the police apprehend a man from the Skarholman gang driving around in the Varberg neighborhood and at one point aiming a weapon at the wrong person. For the police, it becomes clear that he is driving around looking for someone to shoot. The man is convicted of aggravated unlawful threats and aggravated weapon offenses. In a short period at the end of 2023, three incidents related to firearms violence occur in Varberg. Investigations are ongoing, and preliminary investigations are confidential. However, it is evident that there are connections to the same conflict. December 15, 2023 at 9.22 p.m. on Friday evening, a shooting was reported in Varberg Center. In the operation, the police find traces of a shooting, but no injured persons. December 27, 2023. At 8.27 p.m. on Wednesday evening, a shooting was reported in Varberg, Stockholm. A minor boy has been shot and makes his way to Varberg Center where he seeks help. According to the police, the injured boy was shot at a location a little further away than where he was found by the police. The boy was treated for serious injuries, but survives the attempted murder. During 2024, indications continue to come in that the conflict is still ongoing. Several open cases exist. These are considered ongoing conflicts, all unfolding in real time. Hey man, same man. Shout out to Crime Sweden for putting it in English, bro. This is actually very interesting. I'm not going to lie. That was tough for the dad, man. Trying to step up and 
Hey man, just let the angle lie. These kids nowadays just crash house, bro. Just let them be, bro. They just hey, just let them be nowadays, bro. Hey, if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you guys like the stream, subscribe to the channel. If you want some more crime sweden, man, comment it down below which video you want me to react to. And I'm gonna try to do one like every other day. Maybe I'm gonna try to do one every day. I'm gonna say that. I don't know how long it's gonna take to edit these videos, but I got y'all. Make sure you guys like the stream, subscribe to it. I mean, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on IG, Twitch, and Snap, all at the bottom of the screen. And without further ado, I'm gonna catch up, boys, in the next video. And I'm gone. Peace.